The Cities of Sigmar Great the Glory continues and in today's video Halia's forces are boosted with the arrival of the massive War Hulk. And let's not forget about the little Fusil Major on the top. This has been a model I was looking forward to adding for this armory for a while. A massive armoured ogre, what's not to love. But I completely overlooked that there's a Fusil Major on his back and this makes this model a hero model. So no big units of ogres for this army. I start small on the big guy and I use Bugman's glow on his face and neck. For his clothes I use Calgar blue and then add another thin layer on it to get a solid coat. With the blue looking good I use Abaddon black on his pants and boots. I use lead belcher on the metal parts like his armour, the helmet, chains and his mace. There are two separate wooden parts on the ogre, the watchtower and the frame that goes around his waist, and I wanted them to be two different colours. I base the waist wood with dryad bark and I'll come back to the watchtower later on. I really like how I painted the doom bull brown leather gloves that I did in the previous video, so I wanted to use it again on his gloves, the leather straps and on his boots. To make his helmet slightly fancier, I used Rune Lord Brass on the symbols on the top part. There are two rope parts on the model, so I went to a Hobgrat hide as a base colour for him. There are also a few small Parisman parts that he has sticking on him, and I based them with Zandri Dust. For the final base colour, I added some Liberator Gold onto the metal parts of his sword sheet and the sword's pommel. With the base coats all dry, it's shading time, and I started off with Drakenoff Nightshade on the blue clothes. I was thinking of trying out Ultramarine's blue contrast, but it's just too dark and the Drakenoff Nightshade just goes over perfect on the Calgar blue. Up next was Reikland Flesh Shade, and this covered a few parts like the bronze, the rope and the parchments. Nullin oil was then used to shade not only the metal parts but also the pants and the boots and it was also used to darken down the leather straps and gloves. The wood on his waist was then shaded with gore grunt of fur. It's now highlighting time and I started off by layering on some tin down Cadian flesh tone on his face. I'm still a little bit shaky about highlighting faces so I'm going to come back to this later on to touch it up if it's needed. To finish the blue, which I'm going to start calling the fair fired blue because I've used it so much in this army, I paint along the edges and any of the raised areas along the clothes with rust grey. The boots and the pants were then highlighted with eschen grey. For the edges of the metal, I decided to try Ironbreaker instead of just going with Stormhost Silver. It's not as bright as Stormhost, so it means that the edges are not too bright compared to the darker metal, so there's a nice little contrast of darker metal to a mid-tone metal colour. Gotor Brown was then used to highlight the wood. I started off by trying to edge highlight lengthways along the wood, but I started going down the ways with thin lines, and I think this gave the wood a lot more of a rougher look that suited it really well. Although I changed to using Ironbreaker for the silver highlights, I did use Stormhold Silver on the bronze part of the helmet to make it shine a little bit more. To brighten the leather back up, I went to Scrag Brown on the edges of the straps and the raised parts of his gloves. The parchments were then quickly painted with flayed on flesh along the edges and any of the raised parts. To finish everything off, I went back to the face that I wasn't too happy with and I gave it a shade of Reikland Flesh Shade that was tinned down with Lamin Medium. It darkened down the Cadian Flesh Tone just enough so I'd be happy with it, and it turned out really well. For the Watchtower, which I should have painted separately before I glued it on, to make it a little bit more easier to do, I based it with Baneblade Brown, shaded it with Agrax Earthshade and then dry brushed it with a mixture of Baneblade Brown with a little bit of Corax White mixed in. For the shield, I wanted to try something a little different, and I wanted to see if I could do a checkerboard pattern along the bottom. I've never done it before, so as carefully as I can, I drew out the squares with Wraithbone and filled them in along the rest of the shield. I then shaded them with Wraithbone and highlighted the edges with Pallid Witch Flesh. For a finishing touch, I dry brushed some Baneblade Brown on the bottom of the shield, then followed by a lighter dry brush of Scrag Brown along the edges. The checkerboard didn't turn out perfect, but I think it's a decent enough job for the first time trying it. 
There was a nice opportunity to add a small bit of brightness to the model with the lantern on the top. So I based the glass part with Corax White and tried blending in some flesh tears red, some Griffhound orange and then some Imperial Fist contrast paints on it. There was a bit of a back and forth to get the colours to the workout just right but it turned out pretty decent in the end. As for the Fusil Major himself, the only thing that was painted differently about him was his hair and that was done with Mornfrank Brown, Agrax Earthshade and then highlighted with Scrag Brown. After painting the base, the Fusil Major on Warhulk was finally finished. I love this guy and I really wish that this was a unit instead of a hero model. But this guy comes in at 150 points and it makes him the most expensive hero in the army. I was going back and forth between the Battle Tome and the AOS Army Builder app and some of the points have been slightly adjusted over time in the app but I'm going to be taking the points cost straight from the Battle Tome. With 900 points already painted, the addition of the Fusil Major puts the total up to 1030 points. With the final goal of 1500 points closing in, it's time to add some heavy backup to the army with the Ironwell Great Cannon in the next video. But if you guys like this video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.